Thanks, Maurice. Um, it's really great to be here. It's nice to see everybody. And it's certainly nice to be in the company of my distinguished colleagues, um, John and Stan. So um, uh, Maurice has asked me to talk about what's next. And so I've given a lot, of, as, as he mentioned, I've given a lot of thought to this. Um, I'm an instructor at Art Center College of Design. I've been teaching there for over 20 years. Um, and um, it's one of the coolest things to do, but what's happening is change is occurring so quickly in our field that to keep up in a way that's meaningful to young people that are um, devoting this much time and, and, and enormous resources in their education, we have to keep up with the industry more than just trying to figure out what's going on, but what is going to go on in the future. So th through the leadership of the department, Nick Coppermoss, and I and a number of other colleagues there, we're trying to figure out what it's going to look like in our field five and ten years out. There are some clues, and I'm going to go through um, our process and show you what we think is going to happen. And there are some predictions in here. Uh, Maurice mentioned that I've been working on this presentation for years. I actually had been working on the presentation that I was going to show you for a few years. <laughs> this new one um, just started last night. <laughs> so, little improvisation. So I have a prediction that graphic designers are going to be peddlers, do-gooders, Swiss Army Knives, Storytellers, and Nomads. Let's start with peddlers. I think that one of the great trends, and it's being proven out, is that designers are becoming incredible entrepreneurs. Because of the um, amazing easy access to technology and short-run manufacturing, we're able to prototype, crowdsource funding, and place things into the marketplace in a very, very short period of time. Designers have abundant ideas, and now they can make stuff and put it out there and be entrepreneurs right out of the gate. So this is, these are some examples of some things that are going on right here in Los Angeles. And um, one of the cool things is that they are masters of social media. So what they create goes out and gets the buzz it needs in order to be uh, put into the market right away. So I want to introduce a few of these folks to you. One of them is Yolanda Santosa. She runs a firm here in Los Angeles called Ferro Concrete. And she was a student of mine many years ago. I'm very proud to have been one of her teachers. Um, she started out with branding a lot in, um, in, at Art Center, then went into motion design and did some, top, some of the top motion design uh, projects of the time, and then branded Pinkberry, which um, really, really started her business. And her most recent venture is a bakery shop that she put together with her mother. And it's called Fruit. And it's wonderful. So graphic design, motion design, uh, you know, bakeries. Uh, ONG, also a student, is, uh, is now working with Yolanda Santosa and has, has launched Commodity, a fragrance line sort of a luxury fragrance line that you can customize online and have delivered. Uh, Johnny Cupcakes Earl is uh, creating incredible t-shirt designs, really funny, and has great outlets all around the country. And Johnny Earl is also really giving back to his communities as an incredible mentor, mentoring others to understand how to take the, what they do, put it out into the world, and be great entrepreneurs. And Spencer Nicosi, who is an industrial designer, but uh, whose father was a graphic designer, um, has put together a uh, company called Kill Spencer, where it's a luxury luggage line and accessories line. And he, a lot of his, his materials are uh, reclaimed <coughs> materials. And he has a manufacturing plant here in Los Angeles, downtown, using all lo local craftspeople. So the other aspect that I want to make you aware of is that of do-gooders. When John and Stan and I were 
starting out, sort of after college, getting into our careers, we were looking for peer recognition. And we would do that by entering shows and getting awards from the art director's club, from the type director's club. This helped us know where we stood amongst our peers. It helped us see how our work really, um, um, how the artifacts that we were creating uh, were sizing up. The new generation really doesn't care about award shows. They want to do stuff that's really great in their communities. This is how they're getting the peer recognition. It's not about artifacts. It's creating meaningful communities. And I really want to, I, I, I think about this trend, and I, and I think it's enormous, uh, an enormous um, act of gratitude for young people who are saddled with enormous educational debt to come out and decide they want to give back to their communities. Um, this is a colleague in Boston. Her name is Denise Korn, and she has youth design, and she helps mentor young uh, high school students that um, may not have educational opportunities to come into the field of graphic design. Project M is led by John Bielenberg, who brings um, his colleagues in and helps a group of students make a difference in underserved communities, not just in the United States, but around the world. And one of my favorite do-gooders is, um, is Matthew Manis here in Los Angeles. And he runs a studio called Very Nice. And it's a crowdsourced model of pro bono work. So he's not just doing the work. He's got a team of over 200 designers around the world that are dedicated to do maybe one pro bono project a month. And he just posts that project up and then folks decide whether or not it's something they are, they're interested in and whether they have time to do it. So it's a crowdsourced model of do-gooding. Again, that's Matthew Manis, and the name of the company is very nice. Very nice. <laughs> so graphic designers in the future will be Swiss Army knives. And what we have to understand is that it's about media ambidexterity. It's something where we have to be able to think about not just the brand and it in a linear way. We're thinking about how it moves around always. What is the dimensional application? What is the interactive application? What is, what is, what is next for the experience of this brand? So this is not new. Well, actually, uh, the name is new. Uh, we're calling it Transmedia Design at Art Center, and we think it's going to be uh, a name that's going to stick. And what it means is that you're dealing with a combination of print communications, <coughs> packaging, or three-dimensional communications, interactive communication, both on screen and in environments, and time-based, meaning video, motion graphics, and sound. So these are happening simultaneously not in a linear way. And it is telling the story of a company or a brand or um, whatever, that, what is, whatever is uh, the client or organization that we're serving. And of course, we know now that transmedia is not new. Saul Bass was doing it back then. The Eames were doing it. It is something that we have great history with. So the pioneers were doing it, Bauhaus was doing it, Da Vinci was doing it. Now what these visionary designers had in common is a particular love of craft and a, a desire to play. They also had these strange ideas of what the future could be going back and forward. So they were unbound by time and unbound by um, by fear of failure. They would prototype quickly. They would, they would enjoy the craft. They would learn from the materials, just in the way that John was talking about, in this beautifully, beautifully fearless way. So just to give you an idea of, um, of current transmedia, uh, this is what a logo has become.
So this is Moving Brands, Swisscom rebranding. And Moving Brands is an incredible company in San Francisco that really has taken logo design to what is the next level, Make, making it a time-based experience, making it an interactive experience. This is about what, what a logo design would be like if it was reacting to wind. That's where the, the, the essence of this is. So it's no longer a flat vector graphic because none of the applications are flat vector graphic. Everything's, everything is dimensional, everything is interactive, and everything is more than just uh, using more senses than just our vision. So what is it like to learn transmedia design? What, uh, it's actually kind of interesting because students come into art and design school with a pervasive understanding of the world around them being multidimensional in terms of the messaging. They're resonant with these changing fluid spaces and they're toggling between, um, between media all the time. And what we do, in, what schools have done in the past is sort of focus them in on these screens. And their work is all done behind a computer screen. And that's the problem. There's a reason it's called a screen. It filters out the sensuality and dimension and experience that we have in the spaces that we live. It filters out the interactions that we can have with one another and our awe of the world around us. It also helps, it, it also inhibits us to understand the leaps we can make with linear time. So what I've been um, involved in is to try and get students to do things in a different way. And also, uh, faculty director Brad Bartlett works with students at Art Center to create projects such as this. This is a transmedia design project from Paul Hoppe in one of Brad Bartlett's um, classes. And it is a rebranding of the Exploratorium in San Francisco. So it has its sort of visual, what we would term print components but it goes on to have a component that is all about an algorithm for uh, identity that is never, never the same, continuing to move and continuing to evolve and completely resonant, resonant with what the Exploratorium is all about. So in this instance, um, Paul Hoppe is using uh, processing, an open source coding um, um, method, coding language, to create this very interesting and new way of looking at a logo design. Um, in my class, I, um, I gave an, give an assignment to rebrand or brand a, a new museum, a museum that doesn't exist. And Dan Pappas decided he was going to create interactive posters. So these are projected interactive posters. So, we will become storytellers because this is the way that we're going to have a more meaningful, compelling way of reaching people. It's not about delivered media anymore. It's about engaging someone and inviting someone to interact and understand and actually feel um, part of this particular experience. And what I've started to do is something that's completely nuts. I'm I'm asking students to create video. I have no experience in, in creating video. Well, I have some motion graphics ex experience, but I want to have, I want to ha be as fearless as a teacher as I ask them to be as students, okay? So we're both learning and we're bo we both know that we have the right tools because as designers, I think we have all the right raw material for proper storytelling. And as Saul Bass, I mean, Saul Bass, he was asked to do it and he, and he did it so beautifully. And he did it in a way that was uniquely his. So I'm asking students to, to find out what their voices are. So one of the things I do is I, I ask them to pair up and do documentary videos of each other. And my student, Daniel Young, um, did an incredible uh, video of his uh, classmate, Rachel. So I'm, um, this is coming up, again, new, new. 
uh, thing here. So, uh, okay, so this is the introduction, and here it is. So in kindergarten, I got held back. I remember we were carving pumpkins. It was Halloween, we were carving pumpkins. I was carving my own design, but they wanted to carve a specific design. <laughs> and I remember feeling like, no, I want to carve my own design, but I didn't say anything because I was quiet. I didn't say anything. And I didn't really, you know. And so she, she thought I couldn't follow directions. She thought I just didn't. But no, I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to follow the directions. I just wanted to carve my own design. If you know, were to talk to my mom, like she would probably tell you I was a frustrated kid. I've always had um, intense uh, emotions back when I couldn't really express those emotions. Because I couldn't express them very well when I was younger, it would just kind of be in my head a lot and kind of just become more and more um, powerful. I was a very like in my mind kind of person. Like I always was really quiet and, and that's why I'm like, more of a watcher than a speaker, you know. I love to be inspired by other people and I love to be affected a little bit by the emotional side of things. I, I like when things hit me and make me feel like I'm uh, kind of changing a little bit as a person. The energy that comes off of you know, whatever I'm researching about or designing, it rubs off on me and makes me a lot more passionate about researching them and um, getting to know them more and connecting with them more. I think that's the most amazing feeling. <laughs> I love it. So Daniel started uh, in interactive and after taking um, after t have, making this video, he decided to, s to stay at Art Center and got a scholarship for another term, and he took film classes. Uh, he was just recently hired um, for, at Google Creative Labs, and he's telling me that this experience is going to make an enormous difference for him in terms of how he's going to approach his work at Google. Um, it's also just helping students document their experiences, whether it's their classroom experiences or whether it's their work. And it's really having them feel the work in a different way and feel an interesting connection um, to, to time-based work. So uh, my last prediction is that we are going back to our nomadic culture. We're going back to our nomadic ways. And by nomads, I mean that we must adapt to environmental shifts. So there's a certain level of agility that's necessary. And just to give you a little bit of context on this, um, I'm going to speak to what is necessary for adapting in this new world. Edu students are going to at least three different schools when they, uh, after they graduate from high school. They aren't necessarily finishing them. They might even go to four of them. They're taking what they need from each of these institutions and piecing it together in a way that makes sense for them. Gone are the days that you graduate from high school and then you go to four-year college and you come out and you're the whatever, graphic designer. It is about sampling. It's, it's like sampling. Uh, the next thing is that e the economies are shifting and changing. So they're having to, in essence, move to different cities because different economies and industries in those cities are either increasing or decreasing. So they're ad agile in the way that they're navigating places in which to, to work based on the economy. Um, they're really, really... Uh, nomads with their living spaces. Many of them come from divorced parents and they had to shuttle e every weekend or twice a week from one place to the next. They're used to taking everything in their, on their back and going and living in a new space. So this level of agility comes a lot from relationships 
that they have um, had at an early age. And in terms of their careers, they're taking what they need and moving on. It's rare for a hot young designer that is making a difference in the world to stay any longer than two to three years at any one place. So those of us who want to lure in the best talent, it's just tough to keep them. And it's not, you can't take it personally. It's really the culture. It's, it's the nomadic culture. And they're going to need it because they're going to need it in order to survive. There's no doubt about it. Um, if you're interested in this idea, um, there's an, a really, really helpful article that was written by uh, Fast Company back, or published by Fast Company back, um, it's at least two years old. It's called The Secrets of Generation Flux, and it's about folks that are, that are young and really super talented and how they're navigating in this nomadic way. So, I'm done. <laughs> And uh, I really um, appreciate an opportun the opportunity to come and speak to you about some predictions that we have for the future. Thank you, everyone.